to catch up on what you've been up to since uh, we last spoke uh, in, in person on Malta. And I know that you're a social media ambassador for the Estonia. Uh, and so, uh, yes. and then if anybody shows up, uh, such as Inno Nurse, uh, you know, then they're welcome to join us too. So, uh, so how, how are you, uh, 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 what are you, in any order, what have you been up to and uh, what are your questions for tomorrow? Okay, so uh, just about uh, one and a half hours ago, I shared the questions on my Twitter account. So, and it's linking to the, the latest chat topic uh, post, which yeah. is on headcarecene.com. So they're okay. all there, the questions. I think it's good to actually reflect for tomorrow's uh, HitSM. I don't know if you want to talk about it later, but when it comes to the questions, I really would like to reflect on um, on maybe something which is a bit of a, on a personal on a, a personal challenge that I've been finding actually, and I would like to learn more than anything. So I'm here tomorrow, ready to learn with an open yeah. mind, and uh, I just can't wait. I'm uh, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. The, one of the What's main that? motivations is that. Tell me, tell me. Sorry, sorry, Chuck. That's all right. I I see Dennis is here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and invite him. Uh, just because uh, he's a nice fellow and uh, w and we'll still kind of proceed and, and talk to you. But uh, since we don't have a lot of viewers, uh, I think it's fine no to uh, introduce you to him and make this just kind of a, a nice warm chat. Um, Hi. If... Hello, Dennis. How you Hi, doing? Dennis. Fine. Hi. Thank you. I'd like to um, introduce you to someone. I've actually met Stefan personally uh, about, I guess, a few weeks ago in Malta. Dennis, is, and I, I'll introduce you first. Uh, uh, you're in Maryland, and I think uh, kind of in uh, from a healthcare marketing and possibly is it pharmaceutical background? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, Stefan is uh, on Malta, uh, an MD who I think is working on two masters. Uh, he, a background in medical informatics. Uh, he helped organize uh, an eHealth Week conference. You may have seen some of my Malta uh, pictures and so forth. Um, and, uh, and he's hosting the, uh, HITSM, uh, tweet chat tomorrow, which Dennis is very familiar with, I'm sure. I am. Uh, I am. and, um, I, let's, let's, uh, I, but uh, let's get back to Stefan. You, you were kind of, uh, about to kind of, um, touch on kind of a personal angle, I guess, to the, the topics tomorrow. I will, where, were you, where were you going before I interrupted, uh, as, as so as to let Dennis on? Um, so the personal motivation uh, behind this is that in Malta, we actually haven't started implementing electronic patient records at Mater Dei Hospital. And throughout my studies, I actually had the opportunity to analyze what went wrong. How did this happen? Because there were many attempts, actually. Mm -hmm. So the vision was there. But what happened in the way to actually prevent this vision from being implemented. Now, um, uh, one of the- What, what time span are we, uh, uh, Stephen, what time span are we talking about? When, when were these efforts? So let's say the, 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 these efforts were catapulted with the building of the main hospital. So the main hospital was uh, being built since, let's say 1995. Then it went a couple of, it went, it went through a couple of changes. And then I believe it was 2005 when there was the move from the old hospital, which was St. Luke's Hospital, to Mater Dei Hospital. And uh, the other motivation is that right now in the, the EU presidency, there is digital health is a priority. So each, each sector, let's say each, uh, so for example, there's health sector, there's a trade sector, they choose a number of priorities. For example, for Malta, it was a cooperation between states, our structure cooperating between states, there was, and there was uh, also childhood obesity. Those were the two which really shined a lot. And uh, when it comes to, to, uh, to the Estonian presidency, when it comes to the priorities, digital health is one of them, along alcohol. And, uh, and it's, what's really interesting for me, how uh, the Estonians decided to take the lead on this and make right. it happen in this way. So I, that's also another motivation 
and uh, this this presidency could be the catapult for this had to be disseminated in yeah. a legal within a legal, within a legal framework which is necessary for legislators and politicians to actually be able to implement any sort Dude, of this Stefan, could you explain to Dennis this sort of uh, rotating presidency in the European Union and how it kind this kind of um, I don't know uh, kind of influences or frames these uh, e-health initiatives and events? Yes, no problem. So, uh, so in the within the EU, you have the EU Commission, you have the EU Parliament, and. And there's another, I don't know, there's another entity which I can't remember that clearly right now. I apologize. Uh, but there is a six-month rotating EU presidency of the European Council. The Euro European Council is basically made by the, by the prime ministers of each member state. We have about 27 right now. That might change as you all know well, well, well enough and um, and each macedonia each... right no no <laughs> i thought uh, someone was about to be the 28th and i thought it was yes 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 but as you know we have brexit so uh, one will be the oh yeah one. yeah oh but, then... uh, yeah okay <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was. It would have so, been twenty eight. So, uh, okay. so 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 yeah. So there is that, and um, and, a, and and basically each member state has a shot, a six month shot at um, leading the priorities for the EU presidency for the EU Council. And uh, Malta was the was has just given over to Estonia. From a six-month presidency actually the united kingdom had to be the next one the planned next one but due to the motions of, of within the political scene in the uk estonia uh, took the mantle and uh, basically uh, so the presidency moved six months uh, earlier and estonia took the lead in that aspect so basically, there is this there is the opportunity for us to embrace the health in Europe even more widely, and ensure that the dream, let's say, of actually being able to live within any EU member state without any huge changes of getting your medical data moved from one place to another. I think that's that's beautiful and that's a great vision to have in the first place. I'm actually also trying to um, to short link the questions for tomorrow. Uh, so the, I I, as I can interrupt once in a while, uh, just because I, I, you know, when I had that opportunity, I, you pointed me to some white papers, including one you had written, uh, and um, uh, about uh, about health IT in Malta, which was excellent. I mean, it was like 130, 40 pages long, I think, or maybe 300. I mean. And the first half was really about Malta, uh, the context in which the IT was going into. Um, and one of the things that I found very interesting is, so here in the United States, when, uh, when I go to HIMSS, the Health Information Management System Society, 50,000 people show up. It's the annual conference. Yeah. Uh, and where, whereas, um, and, and, and there are vendors there that are, you know, cross state lines, okay? And so the, the you know, the, the and so in, in Europe, uh, when I heard, uh, you know, the, uh, oh, the policy wonks and, and some and the politicians speaking at, at the eHealth Week in Malta, it was very interesting to, to, to uh, and, and maybe you could kind of pick up on what I'm trying to get at. The re there was an important rhetorical thread that had to do with uh, I, creating a, a more cohesive uh, whole. Uh, is that, and 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 and, that, and this is what's being realized in this case in the healthcare and and, and via certain health IT uh, technologies and policy making mechanisms. It, is that was am I correct in kind of sensing that that was an important uh, theme? Yes, in fact, one of the participants actually directly asked the uh, the EU Commissioner on health. Um, uh, Vitenis Andriokaitis 
I actually pronounced that name correctly with one breath. Uh, so that's quite good. And, Speaking uh, of which, how do we pronounce your last name? Butijic. Butijic. <laughs> Butijic. 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 Yeah, very good. Very uh, good. Very good. <laughs> is, that a, is that a Maltese name? Oh, that's an interesting. Uh, there's an interesting. First, I don't I want to get off topic. Yeah, yeah, all right. So very I don't quickly. want to get off topic. I want. I do. I, I do want to come back and talk about Malta because I, I, yeah, next yeah. year Diana and I have we've actually already uh, we're going on vacation. We're coming to Malta for in May. For May so, all right. So yes, yes. Already, yeah, we're going to. We already know where we're going to stay and everything. So anyway, okay. Back to serious policy. Uh, you were making a point about the, uh, the commissioner, was it? Yes, and uh, so about the commissioner. Basically, we have uh, the one of the attendees actually asked him. Are you gonna do any legislation? Like he, they, they hampered, hampered on this legislation. And in this presidency, there is an opportunity to have legislation directly relating to digital health solutions, which allows to uh, have implementation cross-border implementation across the EU. And when you have a directive, it can be, it should, it needs to be transposed. To local legislation, there's an obligation there. So if you call, if you do that kind of commitment, then that's priceless, you know. And, uh, and I think there's an opportunity for the Estonian presidency to start the route towards a clear legislative framework. I see. Uh, I see. De I definitely see a role for that. It, it, this this um, the rotating pre presidency. Is there, yeah. are there, are there uh, issues of continuity uh, and how are they handled? So I've, I've have, I haven't been so active with the continuity aspect of the presidency. From what I've seen up to now, it seems that the transition has been quite seamless. There hasn't been any serious interruptions whatsoever. There were some challenges when it comes to the uh, to the end of the, our presidency but uh, but things went on quite smoothly and quite professionally so i think uh, i think i really would like to applaud the presidency team in that aspect so i was actually very proud as a Maltese person to actually see oh with that you know a small country like ours with uh, our limited resources and our limited let's say our our limited you know i mean when you compare us to germany for example who has so much so many more resources and so many more so much more to tap into and compared to more and how, how we delivered that's amazing so i'm proud of that now from what i'm seeing up to now i mean we can't really decide say that this transition was seamless right now one week through the to the presidency so it would be a bit uh, hasty from my part to actually come to any conclusion whatsoever right now maybe i'm starting to sound a bit more like a politician here but it's important yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> what i what i think it's important to give uh, the estonian presidency some time and uh, also at the same time see how it's going to pan out now it's within the estonian hands to deliver what they would like to have and would like possibly their, their agendas and their priorities, but at the same time, ensure that what hasn't been reached, let's say in the previous presidency, can be taken over. So I'm looking, so I think we should be, we would be able to start getting back some outcomes and start being able to measure this continuity, let's say within 30 days to 45 days time, to start and seeing like what's being implemented. And also remember that now is the summer period. So uh, many parliamentarians, for example, many parliamentarians actually go on a on a long summer holiday right now. Yeah. So uh, well, let's, that let's, uh, let's shift gears slightly. I see uh, yes. uh, Danielle is there. Um, yeah, she's always in motion. I did try to invite her a couple times, uh, yeah. and uh, okay. so tell, now let's go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your social media ambassador yeah. yes, duties and so forth. Are they basically kind of the same, or are they, or or different, or have they evolved because you've learned new uh, tools? I just want to show you. I actually have 
got some uh, interesting uh, 3D printed um, 360 uh, video gear I, I want to show off, but uh, it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, oh. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> you can see the motion. Uh, we're talking about how uh, Chuck never see. Wow, that's beautiful. That's sincerely beautiful. Um, actually, the connection is quite good, I have to say, for a moving train. Yeah, it's wow. definitely a moving train. It's, it's not very packed, but it's probably loud. Is it too loud? No, it's it's all right, yes. Daniel. With the with the headphones, it's really it's pleasant. Don't worry. Okay. So actually, I have a, I have a quick question to Daniel. Where are you traveling right now? From from where to where? We're just curious. Um, just landed in San Francisco yep. on my way to Oakland. Right. I'm crossing the Bay. I just crossed over. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah. So, Chuck, I actually kind of lost your question in transition. Could you just tell me again? Oh, I guess what? it was just I just you know. Uh, I always like to learn, uh, you know, from, uh, uh, new platforms and so forth. Uh, yep. So you are doing the 360 video stuff, and now I have I have two 360 cameras. I've got the uh, the Insta 360, uh, but the one that's like a ball. I think. I don't yeah, that's. I, I I I appreciated your execution in the. Uh, yes. You know, you had it on your cap. I love the cap. By the way, I think I'm gonna buy one. Can I buy one somewhere or? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, which buy one what? Oh, the cap, the three sixty cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah uh, well, I have, well, if you're talking about the three D printed thing that holds the the, the yeah, three sixty camera, I, I, yeah, I, I'll, I, but but I don't think you have the same Insta Air. No, no, I have different. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I so, found it to be quite cool actually. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have. Yeah, well, actually, uh, my um, here's my three D printer, uh, right there. And okay. you well, see, this stuff is like this. This stuff are like these are like failures right here. So this is a uh, yeah, uh, somehow that's love, broken there, you know. So we love failure. It helps us. It's it's failure. Failure. Uh, but I will show you what I'm what I do have here. So the the 360. This this top piece here is where yeah. the 360 the Insta 360 fits, and then yeah. the then the USB snakes on down. Of course, it, okay. To, and then this actually holds the smartphone, okay? Okay. Uh, and, this, and this and this is a monopod, so I could open this up. And so, okay. uh, so the idea is that I can just I don't have to hold it. Uh, uh, it, it can be up in the air and, and fairly steady. Um, and this also works. This also works if I take this off. I can use the uh, the Gear 360, which is the Samsung, get to uh, which you can live. Oh, which you can yeah, which you can live stream to YouTube, which I've not tried that, but I recorded the videos, and I can watch those videos in, in, in the gear um, in the headset. Yeah, yeah. VR. Yeah. Uh, okay. But um, the uh, what, what was I going to mention? Uh, I guess so. So I read. I, oh, I, I know what it was. So the, uh, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, uh, we, we were right downtown here in Columbus, and they had the Pride Parade. Uh, and I and I and I, um, um, I, I I I I streamed 360 video, which is like 4K, for an hour yeah. and 15 minutes. Okay, and I got and, and, and uh, Periscope uh, featured me, uh, and so I had like 14,000 viewers. Okay, so was, uh, which was kind of neat. Wow. Okay. Uh, now now in, as far as i can tell you cannot you, you can't view that video inside in a vr headset yet uh it's, it's just yet. you know you can move around and hold your phone and so forth uh but with this the what the what i'm doing here is you can see this slot is where the phone fits and you notice that there's this airy area right here so you can see the structure there and that's the yeah. and, and, and at at an hour and 15 minutes my even though i was running off my battery and and, and afterwards i figured out that, that i'd only used half from, I've gone from 100% to 50% for an hour 15 of live streaming uh, 360 video. I, the, the phone was got, was so hot, I, I could barely hold it anymore. Uh, and the other yeah. thing was, was, was the app crash because it was too hot, I think. And so, uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm creating something here that has air that, you know, where I don't have to hold it. Uh, that uh, hopefully, uh, so, so next, uh, in about, Seven eight days, we're going to Key West for a week. 
uh, and there are, yeah, and so and so uh, uh, Hemingway uh, lived there, and we're there during Hemingway days, which is when they have the he they, uh, they have Ernest Hemingway lookalikes and a parade, and they have a fake running of the fun, yeah running of the bulls. So I'm hoping to do a bunch of 360s from from, um, from Key West, but um, anyway. So uh, uh, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so I guess I'm kind of curious how how you know where are, are you? Uh, people are always exploring like new ways of repurposing their content or a new or, yeah. you know, blog platform or anything that you you're doing interesting recently. So our activities for Estonia have actually evolved. I would say we'll be um, uh, blogging more regularly. And uh, we will actually be doing uh, two, at least we'll be blogging twice a month, mm -hmm. which is a, 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 an, an, up, an upgrade from our previous, uh, previous work. I'm also collaborating with Danielle. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working together for Estonia, where uh, we will uh, officially announce our partnership in the coming weeks. And uh, even better, I've also been involved with other clients. So or the clients, I would say partners, because they're reinventing the way we're doing things, uh, especially when it comes to healthcare and healthcare technology. So I'm very happy for that. And uh, apart from that, I'm actually kind of concluding my dissertation amongst many other things, and I'm also working uh, a full-time job. So mm -hmm. there's also the challenge that, so there's also that challenge of actually juggling all those things which up till now I've kind of managed, mm -hmm. but of course I can always I can always do things better because we're yeah. all human. We all want to kind of push the boundaries. But yeah. yes, so when it comes to social media activities, our work has evolved. We'll be uh, blogging more regularly. We'll be doing interviews as well. So uh, the content, especially when it comes to eHealth talent, will be even better than ever. So that, that's going to be very, very interesting. This is a new development for, for myself and even Daniel. And uh, we're excited to be a part of it mm -hmm. because we also see the value of creating, uh, creating content which, let's say, uh, tar targets the, the right audience, but at the same time, the, this content is uh, linked to a credible authority or an authority, let's say, who has built their presence over the past years and who really want to move healthcare and IT forward. So there I see, um, I'm, 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 I'm happy in that aspect that I'm, I'm, I'm a part of this, let's say. So it seems like you're talking about a brand in, in, in some respects, is that? Yes, yes. So we're, we're I mean, uh, the, uh, the partnership between uh, Daniel and myself will be happening. In the, I mean, it's already in the works and it's already being progressing right now. But uh, also, in addition to that, because I kind of forgot about this, we'll also be going to Denmark for the world of health innovation. And uh, we'll also be going there to do also social media activities there. So that's also going to be interesting, and uh, there will be October for me. Definitely, will be the month of digital health innovation. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we are evolving. We're moving forward, uh, working with a number of uh, healthcare technology companies specifically, and uh, I just can't wait. Mm -hmm. So, any uh, seeing you over here in the in the U.S. anytime soon, or yes, I'd love soon? to come. No, definitely, I'd love to. I'm going to apply to be a HIMSS 18 social media ambassador. Super. Definitely. And I just need to figure out the finances and uh, making sure that I'm there and uh, to make it happen. So I guess, I guess uh, after, last, after missing out on last year, which I really regret, actually, but that's life. Sometimes you have to do things. Sometimes you have to die. You have to focus. You missed, uh, when you said missing last year, you meant miss, missing him or? Hims. Yeah, sorry, I meant this year, missing him 17. Because I really oh, wanted so to you be. Had, you had originally planned to attend 17 then? Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, one of my ambitions was to actually visit him 17. 
but actually it turned out that hymns dating would be easier for me to plan out i um uh, i can also daniel will give me some advice you will give me some advice as well i'm sure about it and i'd love to come to your great continent and yeah and, and the nice one of the good things about las vegas is the uh, uh hotel rooms are very inexpensive okay uh, that i didn't know sir. yeah well because of the gambling you know they they, they want to keep the food and the hotel rooms inexpensive because so they can get you there so you, you know they'll they'll get that money from you uh, otherwise uh and so i, I it, it varies but i've been there you know i've been i've had a nice hotel room for like 40 bucks a night 40 us uh, wow okay US. i mean it really is you know and, and you can get like i said that's it but because of that sort of that unique sort of uh uh, Las, then, 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 of course, you've got all the lights and that that whole Las Vegas vibe, which is, a, a, you know, I, one time I, I met a couple on the plane out of Las Vegas, and I said, how many times have you been in the United States? And he said, oh, nine times. And I said, oh, really? I said, what have you seen? And they said, oh, Las Vegas. Nine times. They hadn't seen the, you know, New York or, or the Grand Canyon. Just, okay. Yeah. So actually, if I, if I if we manage to come to the U.S. and especially if I visit with my wife, mm -hmm. I would actually would love to uh, do a good tour, at least to kind of go to, uh, New, for example, New York and then cross uh, to the other side yeah, and I have some so friends to visit. My my I wife and I've been very have been very lucky in that we've lived in we've been lived in Atlanta, Washington D.C., New York City, downtown, uh, Seattle, Chicago. Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. So we've, um, we're in, right now we're in Columbus, which is a kind of a quintessential Midwestern city. It's about halfway between uh, Chicago, New York, Atlanta, and Dallas. Uh, and um, but yeah, it, I look forward to seeing you uh, in Las Vegas. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Come on. I mean, you guys made made it all the way to my little country in the middle of oh, the yeah. Mediterranean. I just feel yeah. obliged. I feel obliged yeah, 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 to be. Yeah. So, yeah, we do have our. Uh, I don't know what the dates are. They're like May eleventh or fourteenth or whatever. Uh, right. I have it in my smartphone. But when my my wife and I are coming to uh, uh, to Malta, uh, and she's very excited. I mean, I, I showed her all the videos that I shot and and brought a couple of books. Uh, and uh, and when I was there, I didn't get to do you know the tours or anything. So yeah, exactly. Uh, it's um, yeah. That's a, well. Uh, I'm gonna try Matthew Loxton one more time, uh, and I this I, I, I look forward to to uh, uh, tomorrow's uh, tweet chat, and uh, yeah. thank you for allowing uh, us to have this nice low key catch up conversation. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. If we can get Matthew on here, great. Otherwise, I, I think we'll let everybody get back to their uh, their busy days. What's next up for you? Do you have to get back to a coursework or a job or a family errand? What, 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 okay. what, what's your workflow? So uh, today, let's say um, I have to transcribe some interviews. Mm -hmm. But it's really interesting what uh, what I've managed to do with, uh, with the interviews that uh, there are some tools out there which help you transcribe much faster. Ah. And that's crucial, especially for qualitative research. I mean, when right. it comes to health IT, there's always an aspect of qualitative research that needs to come right. into play. Definitely. So is, I that mean, for your, is that for your master's? It's for my master's, yes. I'm doing the master's I'm doing in public health. It's about the usage and uptake of social media amongst public health professionals. So I'm getting what, a very deep insight into yeah. what's what are the barriers, what are the challenges for them to actually take up social media, what stops them, and what uh, encourages them. So, what, what, kind of, what are you using to transcribe? Uh, what kind of tools are you finding uh, useful? So right now, um, I'm I'm working with otranscribe.com. So it's really great. You can actually in the same page transcribe and and uh, up, update and also i'm also using a uh, voice base api so voicebase.com and using this api service i'm actually able to transcribe locally 
the the actual recordings. So that uh, that gives me cuts off about fifty percent of my transcribing time because the machine transcript grasps quite a lot of good things, although it does bring out also uh, let's say another fifty fifty percent doesn't make sense or is incorrect. But so you, at you, least I've so cut you down still the have time. You, you have you have to you have substantial post editing on, on your part to yes to, definitely so but it's really I, reduced used, time. I've been using um, a, 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 a lot of my presentations. What I'll do is I'll uh, yeah. I'll set up a little digital recorder, and then what I'll do is I'll marry the audio to my slides in iMovie, uh, and I'll upload to YouTube, and then I will uh, send that link to rev.com rev.com. And they transcribe for a dollar a minute, I think, or maybe it's 50 cents a minute. And they do an excellent job. I mean, it basically, I can basically cut and paste that into a blog post uh, and without having to do hardly any post editing at all. So, yeah. um, so I actually decided to do the transcribing myself for, the, for one main reason. Because afterwards, I mean, let's say to, to actually finalize the transcribing, because afterwards, I would require to code. Mm -hmm. So actually yep. being able to actually see your material and then coding, then it's much easier to go through. Because you I think that's, some, that's an area that uh, if you make a maybe, uh, if uh, Matthew makes a comment or not, uh, I think Matthew is, is might be interested in the qualitative uh, transcribing and coding. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and. I'm not sure if it is a technical reason at his end or he just doesn't want to join or else he just turned us on and then went off into another room. Uh, but uh, Matthew is an interesting fellow who does uh, workflow improvement, quality, knowledge management. Um, and he's based in Denver and D.C., goes back and forth. So If I, if, if I may, uh, Chuck, mm -hmm. just to uh, check a bit, I'm really curious to actually learn from all of you on how mm -hmm. to build health IT capacity in a country. I mean, in Malta, we've started this process, and even in Europe in many places, but somehow it would be really interesting to, to learn from all of you how to build the proper health IT capacity for a hospital, especially when an EPR comes in. There is a lot of work that has been done already, and that has, done, that has come with the other systems which have been implemented. But I believe that the EPR, when it comes into play, and especially like with all this, if you, even you need workflow specialists who mm -hmm. actually go on the ground, communicate with the doctors, and transform their needs into yeah. requirements, or transform their needs, or actually possibly allow them the possibility to actually or to modify the workflows of how things work. I mean, you're better than in the, on this than me, but uh, it would be interesting actually to get things right straight away, yeah, especially and learn from the experience of the Americans. So, uh, well, so I'm kind uh, of looking forward to that. Yeah, I, well, I'm sure that I, I think there, that uh, there's lots of opportunity to learn because, from our mistakes. Um, and um, I did actually did a couple of years ago. I did consulting in South Africa. Uh, South Africa, with, cool. yeah. And they were they they had uh, well, I think it was like about they were a for profit healthcare system with like fifty three clinics and hospitals that were networked together, and they were looking at electronic health rec clinically relevant software. And and one of the uh, interesting oh, I don't know uh, conundrums or tensions. Uh, I mean, I think I think they got their money's worth, uh, but uh, you know they kind of come we came in automatically thinking that what so here in the United States we have um, oh I think through Hims there's the MRAN M electronic medical record something yeah, level that's also it's, a it's kind of, right yes uh, and it's kind of uh, well you've got you know this a set you it's kind of a by rote. Uh, uh, you, you know, th this is the beginner level. This is the next level of sophistication. This is the next level of sophistication, and it builds up, and then you, I think you can get certified and so forth. Uh, and I, I'll say I kind of quibble uh, with that 
the 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 person who contacted me from uh, from the MIS department uh, in South Africa was actually an industrial engineer like me. I'm an my I have a master's in industrial engineering, which is basically masters in workflow related stuff. Uh, and um, so you know uh, they because they were South Africa and they had a rather kind of a, a, a unique they had. Well, what it came down to was they had two or three strategic goals that had to do with patient safety, um, uh, coordinating with physicians in the community, uh, and um, uh, drug tracking, um, okay. uh, and 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 so uh, would you know, it be drug there, tracking or prescription? Prescript with drug and prescription driving. Just it, it, all, it, there was a, I mean, it just they had they had a, 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 a drug abuse issue that they needed to sort of uh, manage, uh, as well as um, you know tracking the prescription of drugs to ensure that uh, uh, the wrong ones weren't prescribed and people didn't abuse uh, and get access to drugs they shouldn't and that kind of stuff yeah. and. And, and so one of the things that, that, that kind of came out of that was if they did all of those layers, it, it puts off like 10 years ad addressing those specific uh, uh, strategic possibilities or, or, or issues, okay? And so it kind of turned into, well, okay, let's look at the workflows of those areas and then look at the data you need for those workflows and then look at the software that can hold that data and communicate that data in flexible ways so that you can evolve, build and evolve in the future. Uh, you know, and, and, um, and by the way, you're, uh, I've been looking at your profile, uh, the, the little black profile. Now, now you've just suddenly materialized in front of me. Um, but the, uh, so, so the, 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 the it, what was interesting about that uh, conversation with them was, them looking at the, the United States has had a kind of a, a boil the ocean approach to data. It's like we will just collect all the data, okay? And okay. that has had some untoward uh, uh, um, results. I mean, first of all, a lot of the data you collect and you don't do anything with. Yeah, uh, exactly. uh, well, uh, the emphasis on collecting that data turns certain people into data entry people, you know. Uh, and, and also, uh, it sucks all the air out of the room in terms of, uh, you know, it's all about data. we we have a yearly conference here called health data Palooza. I think it's in the seventh year and it's in Washington DC and it's all the policymakers and it's all about open data and, um, and, 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 and startups, uh, that are leveraging data in clever ways. Uh, but there have no, there have been no workflow healthcare workflow palooza's, you see? Um, and, uh, and it's in it, and, I, and, and, and it, 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 yeah. So, so the funny thing is, is that it, there, there, there's some really some great workflow software outside of healthcare. Uh, outside, uh, of healthcare. outside of healthcare. Out, yeah, they could be, yeah. I mean, the other industries are, you know, a couple of decades ahead of healthcare in terms of using the workflow uh, software. Uh, and if you talk to the CIOs of hospitals, a couple of years ago, I did a focus group with 50 CIOs from the top medical centers in Scottsdale, Arizona. So we had Tufts and Duke and um, Utah, uh, Intermountain and so forth. And, uh, and they all really, if, when you told them, uh, you know, about, uh, and, and, the, and the people who were running the, work, the, the focus group were basically trying to figure out how to sell workflow software to these people. And the CIOs said, yeah, we love this stuff. It's just that we, we, we we are stretched so thin, and by our government mandates that all, that are all about collecting data and reporting that we that we just can't even you know go there, um, and so I just you know so I'm always I'm always one of the things that I was interested uh, about the eHealth Week visit uh, in Malta was on one hand you you know you didn't you don't see the scale uh, that you see for example at Hims with a million square feet and fifteen hundred vendors. Yeah. Three-story, uh, th you know, three-story booths. The top yeah, story is where you typically sign the contracts as you look down on the crowd. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the folks that the folks that I talked to, uh, 
had, uh, and, and I, I'm tweeted about it. I could I'd go back and uh, where there were some really innovative things that would not have happened in the United States because of that overemphasis on data and lack of care or ability to care about the workflow. So there's, there's there was an Italian company. Their booth was right in the middle, uh, and they had they basically leveraged content management system uh, platform, very similar to you know Drupal or Joomla or WordPress, uh, which which have certain uh, rudimentary workflow capabilities. Uh, and they were scaling that in, in a healthcare context. Uh, okay, so they were so, creating I was, So I was seeing, I, I, you know, I saw some innovative stuff there in Eat Health Week uh, on the floor that, you know, I, that it, I, I was impressed. And I thought, gosh, you know, it, it, I wish we'd see some more, of, see some of this in the United States. So, so. Hmm. It's, what's it's interesting what's that you uh, mentioned five that, Did I mention uh, what? There is, when it comes to, for example, data, workflow can reduce data redundancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, data, if, if, you're, if you have a very strategic view on data, workflow technology can help you get the data, clean the data, move the data, exactly. uh, extrapolate from the data, generate reports. I mean, in, in the data sciences world, they're called pipelines, uh, and uh, yep. the the you know the machine learning and data data science, which you know seem relevant to ex, you know extracting patterns that are useful and driving potentially driving actions. Then, because of those recognized uh, patterns, uh, are you are, in, are 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 using sophisticated workflow technology, workflow engines that 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 you design your workflows that that are that that. that that take the you know grab the raw data uh, and in in a use in a highly usable user interface or uh, or you run it through an you know, uh, integration engines uh, 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 that are used for example in health integration HIEs uh, health information enterprises where they're trying to uh, pool data in a region uh, often have sophisticated workflow technology under the hood and so 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 people it's a very simplistic notion. That that well okay we have to get all the data first and then we can we'll have an API and now and then we can build these incredible workflow things on top of that okay well n no uh, you I I in fact you could actually have started with that bottom layer being workflow uh, uh, technology okay and then implemented selectively your data on top based on the workflow models and your understanding uh, because the because a workflow a model of workflow. Uh, you know, people obviously they think about a sequence of tasks, but 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 it's also goal oriented. So a a, a you know, so a, a patient encounter has a goal, and so that in, in my I kind of cut my teeth in the pediatric electronic health record world, and so you had uh, you know camp physical and uh, dealing with certain chronic uh, childhood conditions, and so each of those workflows had a very specific goal. Uh, to you know, you know, move some number within, uh, keep some number within a normal uh, range, or to you know, generate a certificate or something that allows a kid to go to the camp. And so, and so, workflows are very goal oriented. And one of the problems here in the U.S., as I said, is is that you know we've collected all this data, and yet feel people feel very frustrated because they feel like somehow their goals aren't are not being, being achieved. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, I. Uh, I come from the field of public health and workflow plays an incredibly important role there. And if you want, for example, let's say infectious diseases notifications, the statutory reporting. And when you receive, for example, let's say a notification about a disease, you know that there's, for example, an outbreak in a certain hospital, then you need to make sure that that message or that notification gets to the outbreak yes. control team. Yeah. But there might be that, some that, 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 small that, that, case, but there might be some small case, for example, a single case of a, of a rare infectious disease, then that needs to go to a case manager. Yep. It doesn't need to go to the outbreak team. There's no purpose in that. Yep. So that's where I think that's where, in fact, when I, when I see, when I think of workflow, mm -hmm. I see the basis of artificial, techno of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, in reality, 
I think maybe what uh, what could also be cool, maybe right now it's a bit more fashionable, I would say, because we're all about fashions. And yeah. even ahead IT, we have fashions. Yeah. And I think the fashion right now is definitely AI yeah. and machine learning and blockchain. Yeah. So we have an opportunity there. I think workflow, if you actually integrate it with the artificial intelligence yeah. brand, yeah. I think it yeah. you, you 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 keep on doing better and better and actually yeah, getting I'll, your I'll, message across. I'll, I'll send you a series. I I, I wrote a three part series <laughs> on uh, what I call yeah? new yeah. workflow technologies. So workflow and AI, workflow and chatbots, okay. yeah. and workflow and um, containers and microservices, DevOps, um, and yeah. um, the uh, it, it, I my I have two masters. One is in artificial intelligence. And the other is in workflow. Yeah. And and so if you look at the if you look at old fashioned workflow at expert systems like Mycin at Stanford back in the seventies, yeah. you you had an engine, and then you had some uh, rules, and then it operate, and then you gave it some data, and it, and the engine op applied the rules, and and that's very similar to the way workflow engines work, except that the the rules are about workflow as opposed to about you know bugs and drugs. Um, and so, 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 uh, both workflow management systems today, business process management, uh, which, which you can tell that's outside of healthcare because of the BPM as opposed to healthcare management systems. Um, they both involve, uh, some kind of engine, some kind of, uh, representation that the engine interprets to drive its behavior. And then, and then that operates on, on data. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, yeah, there is a connection. And, and now, now what's happening is you're seeing, uh, 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 so you have business process, you have workflow management systems, and they're learning their workflows, okay? And so you use, they use machine learning to learn better or systematically improve their workflows. And, and the machine learning, in fact, I forget what the name of it is, but there's a standardized workflow language for machine learning platforms. Gosh, I could think, I wish I could. It's got a funny name, uh, uh, I, but the, but the idea, yeah, but so, so, and now part of, part of what's driving that is the fact that all this happens in the cloud. Okay. So something is being uploaded and then it needs to move someplace and it needs to move someplace. And each time it undergoes a transformation and, and you, and you have you know, turning the data into knowledge, uh, it requires a sequence. Okay. Well, you don't have that uh, computational power on your desktop and you no longer have it down the hall. And you can't upload it and then download it, upload it and then download it, and upload it and download it for all those steps because it's just have, it's big data, you, you, you know. So what you have to do is say, okay, here's my data, and here's a model of how of, of all the things I need to happen to that data. And then you move, then you move it into the cloud, and then that data moves through the steps of the workflow. Uh, and so that's another uh, intersection between workflow technologies and, and AI and machine learning. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think we have a lot to learn there, and yeah. I would actually, if I had to do a PhD now, because I would move to a PhD rather than yeah. stay, stay to a master's, I would definitely consider a PhD in, in uh, artificial yeah. artificial yeah. intelligence, actually. Yeah, that's and, a fascinating area. And uh, have you, have you I think we in, have like you can download TensorFlow uh, and run through their yeah. train. Have you run, have you messed around with that at all yet? TensorFlow? I haven't messed around yet. Yeah. I just didn't find the time. Yeah, and rather than just the time, I would say the energy, you know, because that's what happens when you're in academia. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there is the kind of disease, I would say. Yeah. I hate to put it this way, but it, it does happen. That you have this constant anxiety at the back of your mind yeah. that you have to do something related to your university education. Yeah. Be it studying yeah. exams, be it... Yeah. Yeah. preparing a paper be it. and there is that inherent um, uh, you know nagging feeling at the back of your mind that listen you have to you can't do anything else i think it's a bit of a disease this yeah. well i'm rem and, reminded i'm uh, reminded of how surprised i was and impressed that you had written a book on arduino uh programming the arduino platform which is you know relevant to yeah. the internet of things world uh, and so, yeah. and, that, and I've not written any books, uh, but uh, but uh, you know that's that I, uh, there were two th two aspects of that. Was one is that well, you you seem relatively fearless 
when you told, when you said how that yeah. happened. Uh, and then second of all, you didn't let, uh, you know, your, your lack of formal education in that particular area stop you from mastering the topic. And of course, and one good way to master a topic is yeah. write a book about it, I imagine. Yeah. I well, you know, it's, uh, at the time, it also had that I was fun employed, yeah. fun yeah. employed, yeah. let's say. And uh, I was focusing on um, making myself more employable, let's say, through learning mobile development at the time. Yeah. And I think it's also a matter of saying yes, not hesitating to say yes. So yeah. basically, if I can tell you something, I said yes yeah. to your fire talk as well. I could have said yeah, yeah. no. I'm reminded of that now. I'm reminded, I keep, uh, did, did we talk about there's a movie uh, that's based on someone for one year saying yes? I think it just came out within the last year. Uh, yes, I think it's is it the True Man show? No, no, uh, uh, no, you're that was, yeah, I don't remember. It might have been, yeah, I tough maybe it goes back, but the idea of you know, any that this person said, uh. I will say yes every time anybody asks me, you know, and, and their life just, it took them all over the world. Anyway, well, I, I'll show you my, uh, these yeah. are my, you know about my, uh, these are my. Uh, yeah, the hit one. Oh, so, I, I have to send you my uh, US address so that so, they can send them there, you know, so, so pick it up. <laughs> so that's, I've got. Baby. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to try K and B communications yeah. one more time. They're a local. Uh, yeah, great, great, great. Okay, lovely, great. And if they if they come on, great. We'll talk to them a couple minutes, and then otherwise, I'm going to uh, we're, we're 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 about four minutes from the end of the hour, and I want to be respectful. Well, one hour one, one hour flew by. I have to say. Yeah, it's just you know, it's like uh, I I think I, hopefully. Uh, just you and I are fun to talk to. And I have a theory about conversation, uh, interesting conversationalists. Yeah. And my theory is this, and that is that when you meet someone, you say, my, what an interesting person to talk to, that that person is already yeah. talking to themselves and uh, continually talking to themselves or having an interesting conversation with themselves all the time. And what happens is you interrupt that conversation and then they include you in that conversation. So I'm I'm guessing that you probably are just talking. You know, I don't I I I think I don't talk out loud, but I do. I know I I, I have these long conversations trying to figure out you know the, the relationship between this and that, and and so I can imagine that you probably uh, have similar mental uh, phenomena. Is that correct? I uh, that is actually confirmed by one of my interviewees. Ooh. That I had for the I had I did, I did this semi structured interviews, and this gentleman that I was uh, interviewing told me about how powerful is the intonation, the verbal, the words we use, yeah. and when you were speaking to me like this, for example, social media, uh -huh. many times there's this text element. So there's yeah. the emoji, there's text. Yeah. So I can't really see the person's face and these gestures. Yeah. Look, I'm doing all these gestures. Uh -huh. Very Mediterranean of me. Yeah. You know, I can't resist. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I see when I see when I see your face and you see what you're talking about, there's a certain power in it. And I think now the next change, especially for social media and especially for head to formation technology, social media, is to take it to the next level and put in the even more the human element into the social media. Yeah. As we communicate even more through video. And I think that mobile network technologies will help us get there yeah. with 4, 4G plus 5G. And it will be able to do so much more to bring back the human element and the human face and uh, even more into the common. I mean, we're already advancing quite fast, but I think it's very beautiful. I think it's beautiful actually to see that we can actually sit down, have a conversation. I am uh, I am about fifteen thousand kilometers away from you, or even more, which yeah. is fascinating to say the least. Would you have imagined doing yeah. this fifty years ago? Not yeah. really, not really. And my so I'm reminded of when I was in when I was in Malta, my phone rang, and it was my eighty-seven year old aunt in a, a wow. small town in Wisconsin, and she had a question about my mother and something, and 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 I said and I, and and I. Uh, and I, I, first of all, I thought it was kind of cool. And, I, I, and, and then I mentioned her. I said, do you know that you just called me in Malta, which is a small island in the Mediterranean? She said, oh, I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> I said, no, <laughs> no, I said, there's no, it, it, there's no inconvenience at all. I think it's, it, I, I'm wondering, in fact, I said, what I'm going to, I asked her, okay, please give me your, 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 your email. And she said, I don't have one, but my son does. I said, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of what I'm looking at while I'm talking to you and I'll send it to your son and, and ask him to show you the pictures. So, and it was just basically the street scene in front of the, uh, that's so beautiful. It's the kind of, yeah. Way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just uh, like I say. Okay, uh, uh, yeah. we we, the, we, have, we have sixty seconds left. Uh, fi okay. Famous okay. last words before tomorrow's uh, chat tweet chat, and then we're signing off. Go. Let's learn. What's That's that? It. Let's le let's learn. Let's learn. Okay. All right. I'm ready to learn. Uh, ready to learn. Well, thank you, Canby Communications, Matthew Loxton, and Danielle for showing up and yeah. uh, everybody have a great and productive rest of the day and into the weekend.